um, oh, that's not good. I'm sorry. Well, I'm Rachel Olson, and I'm a senior here, and um, I've been a part of the honors physics class, and this is the rest of the team, the R honors physics class. So this is Moses. Say it. hi. Okay, so Moses has been doing the calculations for us lately, and I've been doing the communications. So, and then this is Sam. Sam's been like our really science technology guy. He's been doing everything with the drone, which I'll tell you about later. And this is Andrew. So Andrew's been doing a lot of the budget um, parameters, um, things to do with this project. And so <clears throat> I have a super awesome team. So as you can see, you just met them. And this super awesome team has been working on a super awesome project that I'm going to tell you about, OK? But I need your help. Can you do that? Yes. Okay. So um, our honors physics class has been working with this thing called STEM. Has anyone heard of the acronym STEM? Okay, can anyone tell me what they think it means? Uh, you. Yeah, that's right, okay. So um, STEM stands for science, can you guys repeat? Science. Technology. Technology. Engineering. Engineering. And mathematics. Okay, so our honors physics class has been using science, technology, engineering, and mathematics all together to work on this awesome project. Our project is a weather balloon project. So we're gonna Okay, so we're gonna be launching a 1200 gram weather balloon up 17 miles into the air and into space. We're gonna drop a drone and then it's gonna be detached and we're gonna fly it back to home base. Um, we're going to have all this on video. So that's what STEM has done for us. And so we're trying to communicate to you all that if you learn STEM at an early age, you can be doing these things as well. So we also have a video to show you guys, but first, let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for all these wonderful students. I pray you'll let them learn a lot out of this um, project, and I pray that they'll be able to um, understand how the Bible works with this in many ways. And Jesus, I pray, amen. All right, here's the video. showed you what we're going to be doing. We're going to actually launch our own weather balloon. We're going to do it in the next two weeks. And Sam's going to tell you a little bit more about how we use STEM in order to put um, the balloon up. All right, hey guys. So as a head of the technology portion of this project, um, I've got the opportunity to work with the weather balloon and the drone that we're going to be using. So as you can see here is the weather balloon. Um, ours will look pretty similar to this. The only difference with this one is, and then the one you just saw the video on, is we will be dropping a drone, which we'll be unveiling here pretty soon. So here you can see the package, but in place of this will be um, an airplane or a drone, and we'll drop that as we get into space. So this is a picture of the drone that we're going to be using. Um, I'll show you it here in a second. Uh, this is pretty cool because we'll be able to take it up. I'll have full control of it the entire time. Um, I'll have live video the entire time. So as it goes into space, we'll be able to see the video, we'll be able to watch it the entire time. Um, we'll be able to drop it, uh, and we've bought a computer autopilot system that will fly itself back to starting point by itself if I do not have full control. So I should have full control, but if anything were to go wrong, we have an autopilot system as a backup that will fly it back to our 
original starting point. So to get into a little bit of what's in it, um, does anybody know anybody anything about airplanes? Uh, just in general knowledge about airplanes, how airplanes work. So basically airplanes uh, use uh, flaps to control which direction they turn, which direction they move, whether they pitch up or down, side to side, uh, bank roll, all of these things. So we chose the easiest um, platform that we could to uh, ensure that nothing would go wrong. On a normal airplane, there's several points of failure as far as where you can control it, how you can control it. But with the airplane that we chose, there's only two um, areas that can go wrong, which are right here and right, right here, and those are the two things that control how the airplane moves. Um, as far as being able to see what we are doing, uh, has anybody heard of FPV before? Uh, it's called First Pilot View. Um, it's a growing hobby in electronics and uh, uh, people like me who like this stuff. Um, and basically we're going to have a transmitter which is going to transmit a signal to the airplane, or the airplane will transmit a signal to us. We'll be able to see that video and hopefully we'll have a full video all the way up to space and that is our plane. Um, the battery will go right here which will control the flight should last for approximately two and a half hours. So the battery needs to last. We have to have a really big battery for it to be able to last that long. So we'll have a battery right here. The computer will go right here. We'll have an antenna right here. Um, and then the motor, which will control or fly the airplane back. So we'll go ahead and uh, show you guys the drone. So thanks to the art department, we were able to paint it uh, to look like a gator. <laughs> and we have go gators on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on for you guys and show, it, uh, show you how it works a little bit. So this is what's called a transmitter. A lot like you can control your uh, TV with a remote, I'll be able, be able to control the drone with this. So this is just like a remote control, it is remote. Basically by moving the stick, I can control which direction the airplane flies. Uh, this is basically how all airplanes work. Uh, this is what I meant by we chose the simplest platform we could because usually airplanes have way more uh, flaps to control the airplane movement with it. But as you can see here, we only have two on the back. Uh, and this is the motor. This will control uh, the, how fast it goes. Um, when we're flying down, if we need power, then we can have this. Originally, we were going to make it a glider, so we would have no motor whatsoever, but we figured just to be safe, we'll put a motor on it if we do need it. So that's how it works. Uh, I hope you like it. Does somebody want to come up and wiggle the stick so they can see how it works? Um, how about you in the orange shirt? So what do you guys think? Was it pretty cool? Yeah. So hopefully, um, 
with the battery size that we have, hopefully we'll be able to get uh, enough flight time out of it. Uh, if we were to not drop it from space, then hopefully with the motor we'd be able to get around a 45 minute flight time, which considering uh, is pretty good. So that kind of concludes. There's a lot more technology behind it, but as far as uh, you guys and as far as the project goes, that's kind of technology that uh, kind of makes sense and is pretty basic. So that's kind of it for the technology portion. You have a question? Yeah. No, we are not. Uh, as far as burning up, things would have to be moving a lot faster, um, and we're not going to go um, to the height that a normal object would burn up in the atmosphere at. So we are going into space, yes, but it's not going to be moving near as fast uh, to burn up and create the friction to, to burn it up. Uh, we are going to try to land it back where we launched. So I will have video um, on the airplane. So I should be able to know, uh, fly it just like I was in an airplane, flying an actual airplane. So hopefully we can fly it back to our launch point and I'll be able to land it just like a pilot would want to land it. Yep, the balloon, once the balloon reaches its peak altitude, which is the highest altitude you can get to, which uh, we're approximating about 100,000 feet, um, then the balloon will pop, and then the plane will be left by itself, and then it'll just drop straight down until we regain control and fly it back to our launch point. Yes? Um, the motor, we will not be using the motor in space. We'll wait to use the motor once it gets back into the atmosphere. Then we can control it back to where we started. Uh, not that I know of, but it's possible. Um, maybe. Okay, we're going to have two more questions so we can go on and move on. Yes, ma'am. Um, we'll be filling the balloon with helium, a lot like you can buy balloons for a birthday party. Um, this will be a massive balloon. So imagine a balloon for a birthday party, but you know, 100 times that size, it's gonna be massive. So we'll be full, filled with helium, um, and the, the amount of weight it'll be able to lift, we'll be able to lift the drone. So a lot like you can, um, a balloon holds a string, when it's you buy it for your birthday party, it'll be able to hold the drone because it'll uh, be able to support it. And the drone is super light. Yeah, the drone's pretty light. Uh, girl in the white shirt back there. Yeah, we're going to record the whole thing. So hopefully from the time we launch to the time we land, you'll be able to watch the entire thing. Yes, we will. All right, we're going to go ahead and move on so that we can uh, finish reviewing. Hey guys. Okay, so um, when our launch day was very important to us, so when we thought about where we wanted to launch it from, um, one of the things that Mr. Smallman said was, why don't we just launch it from the GCA football field? And when we, um, when we looked into that, researched that, and Sam and uh, we put our minds together, we realized that one, we were way too close to the ocean and we didn't want it to fall into the ocean. Two, we were so close to uh, local airports that um, that was not okay. They, they wouldn't allow us to do that with um, the vicinity being too close. And then three, it was a very populated area, Chesapeake, Hampton Roads, you know, 1.7 million. So we needed to go west towards Emporia. And uh, here's a map of Virginia, obviously. And the yellow dots are where, where an airport is. And so Sam was like, where, where would it be a good spot to launch it from? And the blue dot is our launch site. The blue dot right there, can you guys see that? That's um, in Korea, Virginia. And so I emailed uh, the, the principal up at Gates County High School, and I said, you know, we're, we're having our physics project, and we wanted to know if we could launch it from your high school. And she said, sure, that'd be fine. So, and we want to say April 1st or, or May 25th, we'll be launching it from Emporia, Virginia. 
and the balloon will float, float back eastward, kind of avoiding all the airports in the area, and going to dro drop about the area where, where Sam has the way to. And that, that, that's what we're hoping. Whereas if we launched it from the coast, which is over there, it would most likely go into the ocean, uh, airport would Hopefully, hopefully we'll be fine. We don't get one of these So, okay. So one of the biggest things we kind of wanted to incorporate when we were doing this whole thing is recording information. Uh, normally, when scientists launch weather balloons, their goal is to put sensors on those weather balloons so that they can record information as they go up. The sensors that will be on this airplane as it ascends into space will be a temperature sensor, so we'll be able to record the temperature as all the way we as all the way up to space. We'll be able to record the wind speed, so what the wind is looking like all the way up to space. And then pressure. Pressure is important um, because we can we'll be able to track that as well. Um, so this graph kind of shows, I don't know if any of you can see it, but the graph kind of shows what pressure looks like as the altitude increases. So our goal is to kind of mimic this graph just so we can scientifically um, record that. So that should be cool. So as the altitude increases, which is the blue line, the pressure increases as well. And then as the balloon pops, which is right here, you can see it starts its descent very quickly, and the pressure um, descends as well. So those are just kind of some of the things we want to record. We'll be able to log it. We'll be able to show you guys our results, which should be pretty cool in the end. Um, so. Since there's a lot of uh, potential for this to go wrong, um, a lot of things could go wrong if something breaks, um, the temperature in space is about negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit on a good day. Um, so that's super cold. It was about 26 degrees this morning. So imagine 30 degrees, uh, that's negative, negative 30 degrees. So it's, it's gonna be pretty cold. Our technology is gonna freeze for a certain amount of time. Our components are gonna freeze. The airplane will get stiff and hard and it'll everything will just be frozen for a very long time. So the, the potential for something to go wrong is very likely. Um, so we need a return label. So if this does crash, if so this does fall somewhere around the Hampton Roads area, um, we'll have a return label on it. So if somebody finds it in the process, uh, we'll have the school name, we'll have the school's address, and then a phone number, probably one of our phone numbers. So if something does happen, then we'll be able to recover it. So that's super important, especially since you know we've dumped all the time and the money into it. We kind of want to get our results back. We want to get the video footage back. So that will be the return label. All right. So uh, another one of my jobs was to uh, kind of research the biblical integration side. Okay. By show of hands, who's ever heard of biblical integration at GCA? Miss Pope. Miss Pope has. Okay. So let me kind of explain it to you guys. Um, at GCA, since we're a Christian school, Mr. White, Ms. Pope, uh, Mr. Mowry, uh, Mr. Wilson, they, basically the high school administration have impressed on each teacher, no matter if it's Bible, uh, English, history, to try to find a way to um, have, have a biblical side and relate that subject to Christianity and, and our faith and values and what we believe in. And so um, most of the science teachers and, and math teachers, history teachers, and English teachers, you know, it, it have a pretty difficult job. You know, how do you relate a verb and a noun to you know Christianity and, and um, the Bible? But for science, I uh, I found two verses, and I didn't want to like uh, I didn't want to preach to you guys or anything. I didn't want to lose you, so I just found two verses. And uh, the first verse is uh, Proverbs twenty-five two, and it says, "It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search things out." And then my second verse is from Psalms 111, verse 2, which says, Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. And so uh, from that, as uh, myself, Moses, uh, Rachel, Sam, and Mr. Smallman look at this project, um, you know, we're, we're trying to uh, launch a weather balloon 100,000 feet in the air into space, right in the stratosphere, and just see what we can see. You know, obviously they've done it. We've watched videos of it, but but as Sam, you know, looks as he is control, he he's literally going to be looking at outer space and looking at what God created. And so, as we researched this project and as as we um, studied, you know, it, it's it's amazing, you know, all the components of this project and just how we can do this with a with a drone 
and a weather balloon. You know, as, as Moses said a minute ago, this thing is very light, and it's amazing how this drone is pretty much carrying a 1,200 gram weather balloon. I mean, that's amazing. And, and science and um, how, how we're putting this together, you know, it's all, it's, it's really not us, it's more what God intended us to do and to search things out. And so, um, that's pretty much all we have for you guys today. I, I hope you enjoy the enjoy the project. Sam has done a lot of work. Uh, Moses has done a lot of work. Rachel's done a lot of work, uh, and we, we're excited about launching. And I think somebody asked uh, if we will we will try our best to get a view for you guys and come back. And then Rachel wants to close us out. All right, guys. So are you ready to search things out? Yes. So after everything we've learned today about STEM and what the physics class has been doing, I hope that. I hope that um, we've inspired you to want to learn more about STEM and science, you know, technology, engineering, mathematics, and maybe join the physics class for yourself when you grow up and you get to high school. So it's a really fun project and we've really learned a lot. Are there any last minute questions? We're going to show you a picture of what it's going to look like. the size of the screen, I think. It's it's going to blow up because it's going to be filled with gas, so it's going to be pretty big. Yes? As it, as it ascends, it will get bigger and bigger and bigger um, as the pressure increases, so it will eventually get hot as it gets bigger. So it'll start uh, smaller, and then as it about gets about hot, it will about the size of the screen. That's how big it will find that we're not going to have enough battery left, then we can cut power to the motor and then just glide with the video system and the airplane system itself. So we don't always have to have, the motor will be the biggest user of the battery, so if we find that we don't need as much battery, then we can just cut that. So we should we should be good though. Yep. Uh, we all will be here next year, so that's a question for Mr. Smallman. <laughs> you know, later on, when you get to high school, you could do it. You can be like, hey, I want to do the weather balloon project and tell Mr. Smallman, and then you can do it for yourself. So. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. All right, thanks, guys. Have a nice afternoon.